So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to solve uh, a few questions from uh, Danny's eight week SQL challenge. So you can come to this website that is eight week SQL challenge dot com and you will find that there are multiple case studies available. Right. So this is the first case study Danny's diner. All right. Then you have case study two pizza runner up to a lot of other case studies. That is, I think, case study eight. Yeah, there are eight case studies. So we'll try to solve all of this. Let me just click on the first one. So once you're here, you will find that, you know, uh, there is a brief description of uh, what this case study is all about, a problem statement. All right. And then uh, you will find the ER diagram, entity relationship diagram on how the tables are arranged and how they are connected to each other. And then some example data sets will be there at the bottom so that you get a fair understanding of uh, what type of questions you have to solve. All right. So I'll just scroll down. So there are three tables here, as you can see, one is sales, then menu and members. And then if you come down a little, you will find the schema here. So what I would suggest is whichever uh, you know, SQL platform you're using to write the queries, you can uh, open that up, copy these create table and insert statements, and then get started with the queries. If you don't use anything on your system right now, you can actually click here that is edit on DB Fiddle. So once you click here, you will see a new window opening up and you can actually write your queries here on the right side. All right. So uh, that's basically it. Let me just close this and go back. So this is your uh, schema. And if you scroll down, these are your case study questions. So just sh showing you the table design. So these are the three tables and you can see uh, each of the table has some of the other ID, all right, and these are connected with each other through either through the customer ID or the product ID, okay. So let me just go back to our uh, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. So I'll use SQL Server to write the queries. You can write it in your own, uh, you know, whichever uh, SQL version you are comfortable with. There are mild changes here or there whenever you write the query so i would suggest you google them up for any changes if you are using sql server you can follow my video to write the same queries so what i have done is from the same table that is uh, from the same uh, website i have copied the schema that is you know create table insert into statements for all these three tables and i have just lodged them here on my you know uh, studio and you can see I have insert statements for all three tables, create statements as well. And all three tables are already created by me. So I would suggest you do that first and then we'll get to the questions. So these are all the, you know, the 10 questions. And then we have two bonus questions at the end. So let's get started with the first two questions. Before that, I would like to show you how the tables look like. So let me just show you the first table. Click on execute. All right, so this is the very first table. So you have a customer ID, then you have an order date, then you have a product ID. Okay, so th this these three columns are the only information that you have under the sales table. Okay, moving on to the next table, that is menu. So in menu, it's a very short table. You have the product ID, you have the product name and the price. All right, and in members, you have the customer ID. So there are two customers and their join dates. That is when did they join the membership? So when did they become a member? All right. That what it means. So fairly simple. Uh, the table design is fairly simple. Let's jump to the questions now. So I'll start solving the first question for you. Okay. Put in a few spaces here. All right. All right. Let's start with the first question. So I just want to, uh, you know, give you the basic understanding of how you go about fetching any query in this case, right? Let me just hide the results pane. Okay. So the first query states, what is the total amount each customer spent at the restaurant? Okay. So before we uh, go about solving this query, just make sure that you understand the question properly. So this particular query is asking you for two things okay focus on the question always focus on the question 
the first thing is the total amount that is how much was the amount spent and it says each customer so in the end we ideally want to know how much did a spend so i can say a spent let's say hundred dollars and how much did b spend let's say 23 dollars and how much did c spend let's say 66 dollars so my result should be something like this that is i should have the customer id on the left and i should have the uh, the total amount spent by each customer on the right okay so keeping that in mind let's write our query all right so we know that uh, the customer names are available in the sales table so just to have it clear in my head i will say from one is the sales table that we want and since we want information from the price table also because if you remember price is only available in the second table that is menu in your first table you don't have the price right in the first table you only have customer id date and product id so we will have to join these two tables somehow and then get to the result let me just scroll down a bit okay so one is the sales table and i will have to join it with the menu table okay now you can use i'm using inner join here so instead of inner join you can just type in join if you want you can also type inner join it, it does the same thing uh, just for clarity and you know readability purposes uh, people tend to use inner join a lot but it's up to you how you want to uh, use it as long as you are writing the uh, writing the correct query all right so let's say inner join here all right now from these two tables what do we want obviously we will start with the select statement so first one we want is the customer id all right so select customer id what else did we want we wanted the total uh, amount spent that is total price all right one more thing you have to remember is when you are joining the tables make sure there is a, a common key that connects both the tables so in this case product id is available in the menu table as well so i'll use product id to join this table okay so where i say on so i can uh, give them an alias let's say for sales i'm giving s as an alias and for menu i'm giving m as an alias so i say s dot product id equals m dot product id okay so that's how we have connected these two tables now now we have selected customer id if you want you can also say s dot customer id since uh, you're using the customer id from the sales table but since there is no other customer id column uh, you can also avoid it but just for readability and you know uh, good quality code uh, purposes you can use s dot customer id here okay doesn't matter if you don't use it just for readability purposes the next thing that we want is the total amount so to total the amount you will obviously have to use the aggregate function which is the sum function okay so i'll use the sum function and what are we aggregating the total amount so amount here in the table the column name is price all right so we'll take the sum of price and uh, from sales table we'll join menu table and this is our condition for joining these two tables and one thing you have to always notice whenever you are using an aggregate function in your select statement you will have to use a group by statement as well and group by whatever is the remaining field here okay so i will use group by and i'll say s dot customer id all right now let me see if this code runs properly so you select the entire query click on execute and there you go so you have your customers on the left and you can see the amount spent by each customer in total if you want to double check this what you can also do is you can actually uh, you know just check for one customer i would say check for a you can total up the price that he has spent on each order and it will come to 76 so that's how you do it one thing you have to notice here is if you see uh, this says no column name 
the first one says customer id but the second one says no column name because we are doing an aggregate but we are not providing a column name for this so to change that what you can do is you can use the uh, alias you can use as and you can name it as let's say total amount or let's say total amount spent that's how you want to name it okay i'll run the query again and now your column name is changed to total amount spent all right so this was the first question let's move on to the next one we'll solve one more question and we'll be done for uh, this video i'll solve the next ones in the upcoming video so the next question is sorry my bad let me just scroll down okay the next question is how many days has each customer visited the restaurant all right so how many days let's see if let's see the first table for that matter the first table gives you the customer id and the order date and what we are interested to know is how many days so days is the first uh, thing that we want to find out and each customer so against every customer how many days has he visited he or she visited the restaurant right so similarly uh, i mean in this case we don't need two tables we just need one table because everything is there in the same table i'll say select what do i want to select i'll say customer id obviously i'll want the customer id what is the next thing that we want the next thing that we want is we want the count of dates right so if i let's say for a if i count the number of order date that is if i count order dates it will give me the number of days basically right just be with me here so let's say i say count order date here okay and we can uh, let's say name it to uh, days let's name it as you know number of days okay now from table is sales and since we are using a aggregate function that is count we will have to do a group by so you group by customer id okay so let us see if this works or not okay i am going to run this it says 663 let's verify it for a all right Let, let's see if uh, it works for a or not so i'm just going to do select star all right so we are going to verify this query okay but because we want to make sure that it works so we want out want to find out how many days uh, has each customer visited the restaurant now if you see let's take the first two this thing so if you see the dates are the same that is first january 2021 so that means you cannot count these as two separate days right it is basically one day so if we count that way let's say this is one day two days three day fourth day and the last date is again the same because these two dates are the same right so we will count this as one so basically one two three and four so a should I ideally have only four days but we are getting how many six as our result so the query is not correct what could be different it, so what we need to do is we don't need to count the order date we actually count need to count the distinct order dates okay so you need to count distinct order dates as number of days that way any duplicates will be clubbed together and counted as one let's see if this works perfect so now for a you have four days for b six days and so on so we can verify for b and c also so if you want let's just quickly validate that for b it says six days so let's see one two three four five six perfect for c it says two so we have one date here same date and the second date all right so this is how uh, you go about and run sql queries where aggregates are required move on to the third and fourth questions all right so the question here says what was the first item from the menu purchased by each customer so let me just uh, show you the table so the first table was 
sales all right where you have the customer id order date and product id then you had the menu table let me run it and you have a product id product name and price and the last table was select star from members okay all right members you had the customer id and the join date okay so in this case uh, the question basically is what was the first item purchased by each customer okay so the two things that we basically want is from each customer when it says from each customer we want the customer id for sure okay and uh, customer id is in the sales table and first item from the menu so basically you need the name of the item okay so two things customer id and the name of the item so let me just first define the tables that we want it from first is from sales and I'm going to join the menu table in that, which contains the name of the item. I'll uh, name it as M, sales as S. And how are we joining this? So we have, we have seen in the last video, we have something known as product ID, which is common across tables. So I'm going to use product ID as the uh, primary key here. Okay. Primary and foreign keys. All right. Now, what do we want? We want the customer id as i said you know by each customer so we'll select customer id that is from the sales table s dot customer id okay what else do you want you want the name of the item that is in the menu table so m dot product name okay from sales and we've joined both of them let's let's run this let's see what comes out okay so you see, let me just bring it up a little. Okay. So you see, you have the customer ID and the product name now. All right. Now the question is, what was the first item by each customer? So ideally, uh, my result should contain that is A sushi, then B curry, and then C ramen. Okay. These are the three uh, rows I should get. So how do you find out which was the first item obviously you can see which is the first item but uh, logically in the system how do you incorporate that now there is something known as window functions in sql okay and there is a very commonly used window function which helps you uh, you know launch a running number to your table okay attach a running number to your table that is known as row number all right so here it is row number yeah it's a built-in function. It's uh, known as a window function. Okay. So you apply a row number and I'll show you what this uh, does to your table. So you say row number with an open and close parenthesis. And whenever you, use, you are using a window function, you have to use the over clause. Okay. And within the over clause, we will do a small partition. Now, the reason we need a partition here is because we only want the very first uh, you know, very first rows of each customer. Okay. So just see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to say partition by now this partition by applies to this row number. Okay. So let's see. So I want to partition it by each customer. Okay. So I'm going to say partition by customer ID. And also what I want is it to be ordered by because I want the first item purchased. Okay, I don't want the first item that's randomly appearing here. I want to know which was the first item purchased. And how do you know which was the first item purchased? You already have an order date uh, column. Okay, so I will order it by order date. Okay, now let's see what comes out. So I'm going to run this, just this piece. All right. Now you see, okay, there is no column name. So I'm going to give it a column name. Let's say uh, you can you can type as something or you can just simply type the name. I'm going to say row number, R, R O num. Okay. Now if I run it, so the column name is now row num. And if you notice closely, you will see running numbers till six and then it resets to one. Why? Because once the customer IDs are 
done with. So we have partitioned by customer ID here. Okay. So for each customer ID, the row number that is the row number window function, the running number will keep running. And once that particular customer ID is over and the new customer ID starts, the running number will reset itself and it starts from one again. Okay. And you can see once B ends and C starts, it will reset it to one. So that's the peculiarity about uh, row number window function. It will keep running. Okay. It's a running number. So now you have something which can help you distinguish which was the first item because we have also ordered it by order date. So whatever you are seeing here is, uh, uh, you know, is ordered in terms of the day or uh, date it was purchased on. All right. Now from this, uh, if you notice, we, we don't need the entire table. We only need three rows. A sushi, B curry and C ramen. Okay. Now what is common between these three rows? The common thing is all of these three rows have row number as one. Okay. So now I think it will be easier for you to find out. So how do we go about doing this? So we have something known as win, uh, CTE, CTE that is common table expressions in SQL. Okay. Now in order to create a CT, all you have to do is whatever query you have written. Okay. So this is now a new table for you, right? This entire table is, this entire query is a new table for you. So you can put it inside a CTE. In, in order to create a CTE, you just type in with, with keyword and you type in a name for the CTE, uh, this, uh, you know, common table expression. So I'm just going to say CTE. Okay. That's the name I'm going to give it for now. And you just type in the ask keyword, okay? Yes. Now this creates a CT. So basically now, if you want to refer to this entire table, you can use the term CTE. And then you write a very simple query. That is, what do you want from this? You want the customer ID. You also want the product name. And you want it from where? You want it from the CTE. Okay. I hope you are with me now. Now, the reason why I did not use S dot customer ID or M dot product name here is because I am taking the customer ID directly from CTE table. Now, within the CTE table, I have already defined, uh, you know, where this ID or where this name comes from. So, I don't need to redefine it now. Because if you look at the table here, it says customer ID and this entire table is a CTE table. Okay. The name of the table is CTE. You can also name it as CTE1, CTE2, whatever you want. Okay. It doesn't matter as long as it's not a keyword. Okay. So you can name it. I just named it at C CTE just to make it clear. And you can, you don't need to define the aliases here. Okay. From CTE and what is the criteria? We want to make sure the row number is one okay where row number equals one what we'll do now is we'll select the entire thing and we'll execute it and there you go so this is your required output three cus uh, three customer ids and what was the first item from the menu they purchased all right so that was the third question for you let's move on to the fourth question this is actually exciting you know when you uh, try to logically reason it out and then solve it. All right. So moving on to the fourth question, that is what is the most purchased item on the menu and how many times was it purchased by all customers? So in this case, you can notice it says all customers. So we don't need a customer by customer output. You can actually just have one single row, which gives you the name of that one product and how many times it was purchased. For example, if it is, let's say curry, uh, how many times? Let's say it's purchased 10 times. Okay. So you just need curry and 10 like that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the tables first. So I want the sales table. Now you may wonder why I want the sales table. I want the sales table because let me just show you. I want the sales table because it wants us to give us, give us, uh, give it how many times. Okay. So how do you figure out how many times something was ordered? The only way to figure it out is using the sales table. That is, uh, the, you know, the query will basically 
count the number of times a product has appeared. All right. So if you look at the other tables, that is menu and members, there is no way you can find out how many times something is ordered. Okay. Because you have an order date here and the customer ID here, you can figure out how many times something was ordered. Okay. That's why we are using the sales table. So I'm going to say from uh, from sales, I'll name it as as I want to join the menu table because I want the most purchased item that is the product name I also I want okay from menu and we'll join this using our product IDs so m dot product ID now what do I want here as I said I want the product name first so I'm going to say m dot product name because product name only appears in the menu table comma what else do you want do you want how many times so you can take a count here okay you can use the count of what count of product name itself okay count of product name yeah that will give you the uh, actual so let's say a product appears 10 times the count will give you the number 10 here okay and uh, i'm just naming this column as prod uh, count yeah it looks good when the output comes out otherwise it will say no name for your column okay so let me try to run it okay i see an error let's see what the error is so the error says uh, menu product name is invalid in the select because it is not containing either an aggregate function or group by clause okay you notice what the error is see we have used the aggregate function here an aggregate function that is count so whenever you use an aggregate function you should always, you know, uh, let it follow by a group by uh, clause. Okay. So you always have to use a group by whenever you, use, you are using an aggregate function in your select statement. So group by, uh, we can say product name itself. Okay. So largely, uh, one thing I follow is whenever if you're confused which product group by to use, usually in the select statement itself, whatever excluding what is contained in the aggregate function you can use the other column name it is not always the case but majority of the times okay so now if you run it let's see what comes out okay so we have uh, shortened it down so we have the product names and the product count that is okay i can now either say it's the order count okay yeah so order counters is four eight and three now, what is our required result? What is the most purchased item? So, the most purchased item here is a ramen, right? That is 8. So, how do you get ramen here? You cannot say or uh, select something where order count is 8. That's not a scalable option because you don't really know what the order count is going to be every time. Yeah. Let's say the uh, database gets updated in the background and the order count goes up to 12. So your query will be obsolete, right? Yeah, it will. It cannot be used for uh, every uh, other uh, requirement whenever you have something in the future. So for that, what we do is let's uh, let's try to you know arrange it in descending order. Okay. So I'll say order by uh, order by this count in descending. So when you do a descending order, what will happen is the one with the highest count will be on top. Yeah. So now ramen is on top. Now what I need to do is I just need to keep ramen and exclude the others. So in other, in, I think in MySQL you can use something known as limit. And if you do limit and one, it will give you just one result. In SQL Server you can do that using the top keyword. Okay. So I'm going to say top one. So what I want is I just want the top one result top one row okay so i'm going to run this and there you go so ramen 8 is our required output now if you see if you do top two it will give you the first two rows from your output so that is something we don't need so i'm just going to say top one and you can just go ahead and run it so the next question is which item was the most popular for each customer all right so in this case we basically need the customer ids on the left and on the right, you will need the name of the items, which are the most popular. 
So how do you find the most popular item? Obviously, uh, you can understand that the most popular item will be based on the number of times an item is ordered. All right. So we will find that and we will try to rank these items. All right. So let's see how that is done. So I'll say uh, select. I want the customer ID first. Okay. The next thing I want is obviously the name of the product. Now I'm using S and M. Uh, this we have discussed in our previous videos. These are just aliases that we are using. So I will say customer ID product name. Now I'll input the other columns shortly. Before that, let me just put in the from statement. Now I want this from sales. Okay. And I'm going to join uh, the menu table. All right. And what is the condition? S dot product ID is similar to M dot product ID. So now this is how I'm joining the tables. Okay. Let me come back. So I have my customer ID. I have my product name. What I also want is the count. So count because I want to find out the number of times a dish was ordered. Okay. So I'll say count and I can just put star here and I can probably name this as order count okay this is one and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rank this so for that I can use the dense rank window function now dense rank window function is used when you don't want to skip a rank okay so I'll show you how so for example if something is similar let's say if the order count is similar for a particular customer so we can rank them both as one or both as two, all right? And the very next rank after two will be three. So usually if you are using a normal rank instead of dense rank, what will happen is after one, you may get a similar ranking as one, but the next ranking will not be two, it will be three because one is shared by two customers already, okay? So we'll use dense rank and we'll use the over clause in here we will partition it by so what should we partition it partition it by it should be it should be partitioned by customer id itself because we need it for different customers right so customer id and you can also order it by what do you want to order it by? It should be ordered by the order count. So you should order it by the order count. Now you cannot use an alias here in the select statement because uh, as per the priority of execution of uh, SQL statements, you cannot use an alias that is already defined in the select statement uh, as another column. Okay. So we will say count star itself, count star. Okay, and I think uh, this should be good. We can probably do this in a descending order fashion so that the highest order count comes up at the top. Don't worry, we'll I'll show you the output. You will get a better idea when we do that. And we can name this dense rank as let's say RN ranking. Okay. Now I have customer ID, product name, count star, and I also have a ranking. So what we have basically done is we have uh, found out the number of orders and we have given a rank to each of those. So let's see how this uh, comes out. Okay, it says it's invalid because there is no aggregate function. Okay, my bad. I have not used an aggregate function here. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So you can group it by customer ID and product name all right so now let's try to run this okay so you have a have the customer id product name then you see you have order counts the reason i have uh, done you know done it in a decreasing fashion is so that you can find out which a customer ordered what item and what was the highest number of orders there okay and the reason why I have why we have given a ranking is because we want to find out the most popular item okay 
So what will be the most popular item? The one with ranking 1 here. Okay. So if you see for B, all the ranks are 1, 1, 1. That's because, uh, you know, there is no timestamp given here. We only have the dates, right? Now, and you only have the order count here. So order count, since it is true for all three items, the ranking will be the same. Okay. So we will uh, show all three items in our output. Let me show you how. So what we can do now is we can basically, you know, just put everything in a CTE. Let me just put everything here in a CTE. Okay. So I'll say with, uh, what do I name it? With item count as this. Okay. With item count as, now this is a CTE now, item count. And what we are going to do is we are going to use the CTE. And we are going to print out what we need. So we just need the customer ID. Okay. And what else do we need? We need the product name. And where do we need, need it from? From item count. And what should be the condition? The condition should be where the ranking is equal to 1. Okay. We don't need the rankings which are 2, 3 and so on. So I'll select everything now and I'll try to execute and there you go. So these are the most popular items ordered by each customer. So A ha had ramen, B had all three items, C again had ramen. Okay. So this is the solution. Now moving on to the next question. Let me just scroll down. The next question is which item was purchased first by the customer after they become became a member. So make sure you read the question very carefully. Uh, we need to know the item name that was first purchased by the customer. Okay. After they became a member. So there are multiple conditions here. Now let's see how we go about this. So obviously uh, you can uh, notice one thing that you will uh, need a ranking or a row uh, number function here because it says first by the customer, right? So obviously there is a ranking coming in. So when a ranking comes in, uh, you will eventually need to filter out something based on the ranking. Okay. So let's start with the CT itself. So I'll say, I'll name it as orders and I'm going to write my code within the CT. Okay. And eventually I will write a statement. Uh, I'll select whatever from orders. Okay, and I will have a condition. So the first thing I need here is the customer ID and the, uh, the product name, obviously, right? So what I will do is, let's say, I'll say select. I'll need the customer ID. Okay. I'll also need the product name. Okay. What else do I need? I need to figure out what was the date that they became a member and what was the date on which they ordered the item, right? So I will need the order date from our uh, sales table and I will also need the joining date. So what I am going to do is I am going to find out the join date. Now MB, S, M, etc. represents different table. Uh, so I will have to define it. So what I am going to do is uh, I'll say from menu and I'll name it as M. I'll join the sales table with it. Okay. And what is the condition? M dot product ID is equal to S dot product ID. And we'll do another join because this time we are talking about, uh, you know, representing order dates, join date, etc. So we need multiple tables here. All right. So I'll say members and members is what MB is. It's just that I have written it up front at the beginning. Uh, basically, uh, you know, you can write it, write the join statement first and then figure out what aliases you want to include here. Now, uh, MB and what is the condition on S dot customer ID is equal to MB dot customer ID because customer ID is the only column that is uh, common between sales and uh, members call, uh, table, right? You can check it out in the ER diagram or you can just do a select star 
from different all three tables and you will figure it out all right so this is my first ct now what is the one thing that is missing one thing that is missing is i need to know which was the first item that was purchased okay now how do you figure that out you can figure it out by two things okay one obviously is you can include a where statement here where you say the order date so it is telling us that uh, it is asking which item was purchased first okay so the items order date should be greater than the joining date because the item was purchased after they became a member okay so the order date should be higher than the join date right so this is a very important condition okay this is one and you also need a way to figure out which was the first item okay because there could be multiple items there could be more than one item if there, if there was only one item then uh, you know we don't need to include a, a, a ranking or a row number function okay you can just simply do it using uh, a where, where statement here but since there are multiple items with the same date, you know, there are chances we are using a, uh, we can use a row number or a dense rank. I am going to use a dense rank because uh, that makes more sense here. So I am going to say dense rank over, okay. Again, similar stuff, partition by customer ID. And what do you order it by? You order it by the order date, okay. And I'm going to name it, name it as RN. Cool. So this is our uh, CT. And what do we need from the CT? Let me show you the CT first. So you can just select the statements and execute. Okay. So you have your customer ID. You have your product name. You can see the order date and join date. So basically the order date is greater than the join date. All right. So all these items were ordered after uh, you know, a, the person became a member. You you see that, you know, the customer ID C is not here because uh, C is not part of the members table. Okay, you can check it out. That's why you, you will not see the customer C here. Okay, now from this, what do we need is, we just need, uh, we just need the column, the rows which have rank as one. Correct? Because that is the first item. All right. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to say, let me just do this bit here. Yeah, looks cleaner now. So I'm going to say select. I'm going to say select. What do I need? I just need the customer ID, the product name, from orders that's the name of our CT okay we had already written this here, so I'm removing that from orders where rn equals 1 okay so now let's try to run this particular query and there you go so these were the two items which were uh, purchased first by the customer after they became a member. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, write it out uh, and try it out so that you get a much better idea. The next question is which item was purchased just before the customer became a member. So this is again uh, a variation of the previous query. So what we can do is we can basically copy the same query from above and just make a couple of changes. So I'm just going to copy, paste it. And what we can do here is, we can say uh, we need the same stuff, join date and all of that. But instead of order date here, we just need it to be in descending order. Because you need the date just before the person became a member, okay? That's why we are doing it in descending order. And 
one more change you need to do is in the where statement instead of greater than it should be less than now all right because the order date should be before your, the join date okay now let me just uh, run this particular section of the query and show you okay so you see these are the details and uh, for a you can see there are two rows with the same rank one that's because the order date was the same now because you don't have a particular times time here uh, we will go with the order date only and since these are two different entities but the order date is the same the ranking will be the same that's because we have partitioned it and ordered by order date okay now let me go ahead and uh, run this entire query for you all right execute and there you go so these were the items that were purchased just before the customer became a member okay so read the question very carefully let's move on to our last question for today what is the total items and amount spent for each member before they became a member all right so straightforward uh, just going to go ahead and you know run this for you what i'm going to do is let's do a select i will need customer id all right what else do i need total items is something that they have asked okay and the amount so total items will just be you know the count of your product id all right and you can probably name this as let's say total items okay or i can say total items ordered that makes more sense what is the next thing you want you also need the amount spent for each member okay so i'll sum the price all right there is a price column so i'll sum that and we can name this as total amount spent okay and now let's go ahead and define the tables so the first table is menu okay you join this with the sales table and what is the condition m dot product id is equals s dot product id and again i'm going to join this with the members table members mb on s dot customer id equals to mb dot customer id all right good so far now just notice one thing it says before they became a member all right so our condition from the previous uh, question itself will come into effect because it it also asks us before the customer became a member and what was the condition the order date should be less than the join date okay so we will just re enter that here we can say where order date is less than the join date now also notice one thing you are using aggregate functions in this particular uh, query so you will have to use the group by statement so you can group it by customer id okay because that is the uh, remaining one here all right let's see if this works okay so customer a ordered two items and the total amount spent was 25 and customer b ordered three items and the total amount spent was 40 okay let's see if this is correct or not now uh, one way to check it is you can probably do a you know order date and a join date also so if you want uh, let's say s dot order date and you can do an mb dot join date okay now 
here you can group it by s dot order date and mb dot join date as well let's see just to make more sense of the query okay yeah these are the dates so this is exactly before they became a number and you have your number of items and the total amount spent so we have basically summed it up so if i just remove everything and just keep our uh, required columns yeah there you go so this is the output of the query uh, here is the ninth question for you that is if each one dollar spent equates to 10 points and sushi has a 2x points multiplier how many points would each customer have so in this query we are going to uh, see uh, see a new concept of uh, case statements okay case statements are used whenever you have uh, something uh, known as a uh, when then or if else all right so if if there is a condition given to you how do you uh, create a output from that that's how uh, case statements work for you so let me write the query for you uh, at first you may think that you know this is this this is a slightly complex query but it is not to be uh, you know to be honest it's it's pretty straightforward it's just that you need to understand the syntax of the case statement all right let's see how this is done so you can start with the select statement what i usually do is i also type in the table name from which i am going to fetch some of the columns so i will uh, need the customer id the product name and the price okay uh, so for that i'm going to mention the tables menu and sales okay and i'm going to join them like this all right now if you are seeing this video for the first time uh, don't worry you can check out the previous three videos that will give you uh, a lot of understanding in terms of what this entire case study is about what the tables are how you can access the tables and i will also leave uh, you know the table creation script and the insertion scripts in the description all right so the reason why i uh, write from uh, table names and you know join them wherever necessary is so that when you start typing a select statement you you don't have to type the entire name of the column now for example i need the customer id right so i'll say customer i just need to type in cus and the uh, auto populate uh, feature shows me the actual name of the column all right so that's how if you are working with a very large table and you have too many columns this uh, comes in very handy okay so s is the alias that we have given to sales column sales table okay so i need the customer id then i need the product name what else do i need i also need the price here okay now these three uh, are pretty uh, available with us this is uh, pretty ready made for us what we also need is a condition where if the product is sushi then it gets two times the points for all other purchases uh, the product gets 10 points but if a customer has purchased a sushi the customer gets 10 points multiplied by 2 okay that's why it's called a 2x points multiplier all right so how do we do that for that you can use a case statement okay you type in case and then you type in the condition so i'm going to say when my product name is sushi s u s h i in small always check uh, the you know case sensitivity of your uh, string that you are going to use if it is sushi then what i want to do is the price that i want to show should be twice the actual points that you are giving to everyone okay so you are giving 10 points to everyone but if it's sushi i want into two okay now there is an else statement else is nothing but what are you going to give to the other customers who don't purchase sushi which is basically price into 10 okay so what it does is it gives you three columns plus a new column which will work based on this condition okay and how do you end a, a case statement you type in end 
and you can give it a alias. So this new column will be called as points. Okay, that's all we are doing here. Now this is done and you have joined the tables. Now let's see uh, what it shows us. Okay, so it gives us a purchase by purchase, right? So for A, it's giving us the dish name, uh, price of the dish and the points. So if you notice closely for sushi, uh, the price is 10. So ideally the points should be 100, but we are doing a two times multiplier. That's why it's 200. Okay, for other, let's say curry, it's 15, the price is 15. So the points is 15 to 10 only. Only for sushi, if you see, it will be multiplied by 2, right? Okay, so I hope you get the point. What it, what the question basically is, how many points would each customer have? Okay, so now you, you are obviously able to see the points uh, for uh, dish by dish, but if you want to sum up the points, how do you do that? For that, what you have to do is, you just put everything that you just figured out in a common table expression. Common table expression is nothing but a CTE. Okay, so you say with, I'm just naming it as, C, as CTE. When you are actually uh, working on a real project, it's better to uh, name your common table expression as a, a real table. So let's say, uh, what is the output of this particular, uh, you know, particular query, right? This entire query. So you can probably name the table as that. Uh, just for example, I'm going to say uh, points points table or anything like that, right? And you can say points table as start the parenthesis and once your query is done, you close the parenthesis, okay? You can do this. If not, just for the sake of understanding this, I'm just putting it as CTE, okay? Doesn't matter. The name doesn't matter, but it matters when you're uh, trying to make sense in a business setting. Okay, next is I'm going to select, what, what do I want? I just want the customer ID and I want the total points. So I'm going to say, select customer ID and I want the points. Now points, how do I want it? I want the sum of the points, okay? So sum of points and I will name these points as total points. From where do I want it? From the CTE. And one more thing to notice here is, since you're using an aggregate function that is sum, okay, you need to use the group by statement. Group by is nothing but your customer ID. Okay, now let me just select this entire query and run it, click on execute. There you go. So A, B, C, you have your points. So it seems uh, B either has ordered a lot of items or B has ordered a lot of sushis. That's why it has the highest number of points. Uh, I mean, that is not the question, but still. Okay, so this is how you do question number nine. Moving on, let's go to our next question. That is question number 10. Okay, let me just put in some space here. Okay, the question is, in the first week after a customer joins the program, okay, including their join date, joins the program as in when they become a member. Okay, so you have your members table. In the first week, they earn two times the points on all items, not just sushi. Got it? So when the customer uh, joins the program, they earn two times the points that they earn on all items, not just sushi. How many points do customer A and B have at the end of January? The reason why it is not asking us for points for C is because C is not a member if you had noticed our previous queries, okay? So we just need to find out how many points they have at the end of January. So there are multiple things to notice here. It wants us at the end of January. This is one thing to note, okay? And it also says in the first week after a customer joins. This is very crucial, okay? So these are the two most crucial uh, conditions given here. Rest point systems, you are already aware how to provide points. So let's get that started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say select. All right. I need the customer ID. All right. I also need the name of the product. What else do I need? I need the price. Okay. 
I need the order date and I also need the join date. Okay, so you may wonder why I'm not using M, S or whatever alias before this. You only need to use an alias where you uh, think that, you know, so I'm using an alias here because customer ID is part of sales table as well as the menu table. Okay, that's why I'm using customer ID specifically with S dot. Order date and join date are only available in the members table or in the sales table. Okay, so they uh, they are not common columns across tables. That's why I'm not using any alias here. All right. So we have join date. Now what we want is we so there are two conditions, right? In the first week after a customer joins the program. So let's see how we can get that. So I will say case and I'm going to say when. So when the order date is between the join date and the and seven days after the join date, right? In the first week after a customer joins the program. So you need to count seven days after a customer joins. How do you do that? There is a very simple uh, technique to that. You can say when s dot order date is between. Okay, you just type in between, and then you give two date uh, instances. So I'm going to say join date. Okay, I can probably just for the sake of it, if you want. I can just say mb dot join date, okay, and I'll come down here. I'll define my tables from menu m join sales s, and I will then join members mb. Okay, I'll put in the on statement later on. So I'm going to say when order date is between the join date. And what do you want to say? There is something called as date add. There's a function known as date add, okay, where you can mention the number of days that you want to track. All right. So this uh, basically says when the order date is between join date and seven days from the join date, okay, which basically gives us the in the first week after a customer joins the program, okay. This is done. So what happens if this is the case? If this is the case, then they get two times the multiplier. Okay, the points are multiplied by two. When the product name is sushi, okay, then also you get two times the points, which is nothing but our previous condition. All right. And if this is not the case, then only a multiplier of 10 is given. Now this is done. How do you end it? You just type in end and you can probably name this as points. Okay. And now I'm saying from menu M, I'm joining sales. I need a condition, which is, which is what? So ignore this result tab at the bottom. This is for the previous query. Uh, on this will be I think product ID yeah product ID equals m dot product ID okay so this is done and we then join members with sales s dot customer ID equals mb dot customer ID one more thing you have to notice here is uh, the question says at the end of January. How do you figure this out whether it's the end of January or not? End of January is nothing but you know uh, in our uh, tables you can notice that all orders starts in January okay and all the join dates are in January so it's easier to figure out January. If it was if it was not January then you may have some trouble finding it out but since we already know how the tables are I'm just going to say where order date is less than February 1st okay so that will include January for us so how do you type February 
just make sure you follow the date formatting however it is given okay so this is how the formatting is this is first of feb month is at the middle year is at the starting and day at the end okay all right so now let's see if this sub query of us works or not we have to also find out you know the entire total points at the end but before that let's see if this works or not okay so basically what you have here is points for a and b c is not included that's fine you have points for sushi 200 points then somewhere you might have yeah for curry you have 300 points why because uh, the join date is join date and the order date is the same so it is within one week okay that's why point multiplier is two times and similarly here right 12 you have price is 12 but the uh, total points is 240 that is 12 into 10 into 2 all right now if you see this price is 15 but uh, points is 150 only that is multiplier of 10 only 15 into 10 why is that because the join date is uh, join date is 9th of january but the order date was before that all right so it is not in the first week after a customer joins okay that's why it is only 150 so the query works now we only need to find out the total points for that we can just put this entire query in a ctc just like we did last time okay and let me just close this ct okay let me just press tab so it looks cleaner okay the ct is done and at the end you just type in your select statement where you are calculating the sum of all these points okay very similar to the previous query total points from cte and what we do is we group it by because we are using a aggregate function all right now i will run this entirely together execute it and there you go so a has more points b has less points and this is what you wanted from question number 10 all right moving on to the next question which is question which which are the next two bonus questions so bonus question number 11 all right all right let me come here yeah so it says determine the name and price of the product ordered by each customer on all orders and find out whether the customer was a member on the order date or not so we all we need to find out is whether the customer was a member on the order date or not so it's, it can be a yes or a no you can print a yes or a no as a new column okay again uh, if you have noticed the previous query this this is very similar to the previous queries you can use a case statement and uh, it's pretty straightforward so in, you know you need the name you need the price okay on all order date so you need the order date as well let's get started so i'm going to type in select you need the customer id you need the order date Next you need is the product name and the price. What else do you need? You need a case statement which tells you whether the customer was a member on the order date or not. So how do we find that out? Basically you need to check whether the join date is less than or equal to the order date or whether the join date was before the order date or not for that you just type in join date ignore this mb for now uh, i'm yet to you know declare the tables i write the from statement so the mb will make more sense when i write the from statement okay so you need to find out whether the join date was less than or equal to order date if 
it was the case you type in yes or a y else just type in an n for a no okay you end it and you can name it as member okay member members you can't name it because members is already a table and just start typing in your table names you join it with sales on s dot product id equals m dot product id one crucial thing to note here okay is you need to use a left join now that's because you need to find out the ordered by each customer okay now let's see if i don't use left join i and i go ahead and use join here okay let me show you what happens let me show you what happens so let me just stop finishing stop writing this okay done now if you run this okay go ahead and run this you see only customers a and b are shown but the query says that you have to determine product by each customer okay and find out whether the customer was a member on the date or not so c also should come here and it should mention no again c but why is it not coming that's because you're joining it and you're only finding out common members here okay so you're not trying to find exclusive members okay for that you need to use left join so what it does is basically when you use left join here it says take everything from the sales table okay whoever has ordered take everyone join them with members table okay on these particular parameter if they don't exist doesn't matter you already have a statement to take care of that okay and now let's see you execute it and there you go your c is also there and it says they were not a member on the order date because they are not really a member okay similarly for a they were not a member on these two occasions okay for b similarly and so on so there was your bonus question number one that is question number 11 let's look at the last question which says rank the previous output okay so basically you take the entire output based on the order date of each customer yeah so what it wants us to do basically is Take the output from the previous question uh, based on the order date and uh, you can display null if customer was not a member when the dish was ordered. Straightforward, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a CTE. All right, I'm going to create a CTE and I'm going to put this entire query within the CTE. It says from the previous output, okay. So half of your query is already done. Now all you need to write down is the remaining logic. Okay. So this is done. What do we want now? We want uh, to rank it, rank the output based on the order date. Okay. So we have seen how to use the rank uh, function, window function, so to say, and display null if the customer was not a member. That's it. So you can probably use a case statement to uh, input null here. Okay. Let's see how we can do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want everything. So select star from the about table. That is the CT. Okay. Let me just say from CTE. Okay. All right. From CTE. What else do I want? Now I want a rank. I want to create a rank. How do I do that? I can say when, let me just hide this results pane. Okay. Okay. I can say when CTE dot member status. Okay. CTE dot member status equals y okay sorry not member status it's actually or we can just say member status here yeah that would make more sense yeah 
I'm going to say when CTE dot member status is yes, then what do I want? I want a rank function, okay? And after a rank function, you use the over clause. In the over clause, I'm going to say partition by CTE dot customer ID. All right. And let us also partition by CTE dot member status. Okay. And then I can probably say order it by what do I order it by? Order it by the order date. Okay. So you say CTE dot order date. Now you can probably run this query without using the CTE dot as well, I think. It doesn't matter. Okay, because anyways you are going to say from CTE. So let's try to run it. This is the first case okay and if the member is member status is not y what do you do you say null okay you just print null here and since we are using a case statement we can say end and name it as ranking all right i hope it makes sense you can reread the query if it doesn't uh, make sense to you right now so going to run this entire thing together. Let's see. Okay, perfect. I think we have got what we wanted. So you have your uh, previous query here. Okay. And what we have done is we have selected everything from there. When the member status is yes, that is, let's see, member status is yes. So whenever it is yes, you have a ranking. You see here, whenever it is yes, you have a ranking. And if it is no, it just says the ranking is null. Yeah. So you basically used a bunch of things altogether. You know, you, you have used your window functions, your window function, which is the rank function. You have used case statements. You also have used, you know, uh, a case statement prior to this. And today we also made use of the aggregate functions once again. So that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed this case study. Uh, you know, I would recommend that you practice this, practice this one uh, once more. And in my upcoming videos, I will start with the next case study, and we will try to keep it short. I know, you know, I have taken a lot more th time that I, than I expected, but uh, yeah, I think we are done here with all the questions. Thanks a lot for being uh, here till the end of this video. If you are yet to subscribe to the channel, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and uh, share it with your friends or colleagues. And I'll see you very shortly. Thank you.